Well, I'm Professor Daryl Jones. I'm um, in the, the Griffith School of Environment and Science. I'm also the Deputy Director of the Research Centre, which is called the Environmental Futures Research Institute. Uh, and I'm an urban ecologist, as much as I can be. Basically, these days in our busy lives, we, we crash at home, we watch TV and collapse into bed and then get up and race off to work every day. And then the weekends are the only leisure time we have, so we scream around doing all sorts of other stuff. We're not at home, but now we have been at home for such a long time. And so there's been a discovery or rediscovery or just an observation that people hadn't had before, that especially in a place like Brisbane, nature is all around us. I mean, there's animals everywhere. And so there's been a real, I think, a a new appreciation of just what we have around us. And I'm really hoping that translates into a, we really need to take, take more responsibility for it, to appreciate it more, and to think of how can I enhance it? It's really sensible for any wild animal to, to have a, an innate fear of humans because you don't know what they're going to do. They might try to eat you or you know kill you or something. But if to live in the city, you have to overcome that because then you can take advantage of all the goodies of you know the food or the new places where you can nest or whatever it might be. Some of them undoubtedly will be saying, "I used to come here for a scrap for some scraps or a bit of scavenging at you know whenever all the people came out for their lunch break." But then no, there's no one around, so that was really noticed. Lots of the busy downtowns around the world they really were lifeless. There was a bit of video of a kangaroo hopping through the main streets of Adelaide. I mean, you know, like the stereotype of Australian cities, it really did happen. At least in Australia, we were, we were always allowed to go for a walk. Every afternoon, every patch of green, you know, every bit of bush had the largest number of people I've ever seen wandering through because I was so desperate to get out into the green. And we know that, that we know that there's an incredible benefits, psychological benefits, healing benefits, mental health benefits, from just being in, nat in natural environments, really important. That was really good for the people. It probably wasn't so good for the animals who, who lived there because they were going, what are, so it was the opposite of the city. All the people were not in the city, but they were in the parks. The environment that we have control over, like if you're lucky enough to have a backyard, that, that's a place where animals can live and visit and come and go and nest and do all sorts of things. It's one of the most direct and in intimate ways to connect with nature just by putting out a bit of bit of food. It is, you know, genuinely a profound experience if you're sitting at home in your, in your flat. Truly wild lorikeets will just turn up because you put some seed on this thing over there. And that's an amazing thing, you know, a, a really wild, unrestrained animal that doesn't have to do anything comes to visit you. And for a lot of people, that's a really important thing. And, and, and now we know the, you know, the connection with nature, importance of the connection with nature. That, that is you know, proving to be a really important thing for people to do. And now we can do it properly and, and safely. Will we just revert to, you know, when we all go back to work and it's all just normal, will it just be, will, you know, will any of this have a lasting effect? I'm, I'm really hoping that it does, you know, because it, it was a while, it wasn't just a week, it was months, it's still going on. So that's a long time to change your perspective and kind of force you to really look in a different way. So hopefully it's been positive.